different types of radiation, alpha, beta plus, and beta minus. And then we're going to see what NZ graphs can tell us about which nuclei will decay and how they will decay. So, an NZ graph compares the number of neutrons to the number of protons inside a nucleus. So, they're always drawn the same way with N, the number of neutrons, up the y-axis, and Z, the number of protons, along the bottom. So, we can then model the three different types of radiation by considering how they would move us around an NZ graph. So, let's start with the easy one, alpha radiation. Well, if a nuclei undergoes alpha radiation, it's going to lose two neutrons and two protons. So this means if our nucleus was here, it's going to move down two of each. So this is the movement on the NZ graph that alpha radiation will do. Now let's consider beta minus. So we're giving off an electron. Well, in that, we know a neutron has turned into a proton. So our number of neutrons is going to go down by one, and our number of protons is going to go up by one. So we're moving one unit this way and one unit that way. So therefore, beta minus will be in that direction. On the flip side, beta plus, a proton has turned into a neutron. So therefore, our number of protons has gone down one, our number of neutrons has gone up one, so it's just the middle. So this is the direction of beta plus on an NZ graph. Okay, all fairly simple, but why on earth do we bother learning this? Well, the answer is that it turns out there is only a certain region on the NZ graph in which nuclei are stable. And we call this the stability curve. So, if you were to put all the isotopes of all the elements you find in the world on our NZ graph, you would discover that all the ones which are stable, so all the ones that are just going to keep going, they don't have a half-life, they're not going to decay, will lie on this curve here. And we call this the stability curve. Now, you might expect the stability curve to just be a straight line like this. This is the line of n equals z. So these are all the isotopes where the number of neutrons is equal to the number of protons. But that isn't actually what we find. Anyone who does chemistry will tell you that especially once you start getting to heavier and heavier elements with more and more protons, you're going to have to have even more neutrons than protons to keep it stable. This is why something like uranium has a mass number of 235, way, way more than double the number of protons. Why is this? Well, that's because as the charge goes up from the number of protons, and that remember the charge is what's going to push the nuclei apart, we're going to need more and more neutrons to give us that strong nuclear force and bind everything together. So, isotopes which lie along the stability curve are stable. And whenever a nuclei decays, it's always trying to get to the stability curve because that is when it will be stable and it will stop decaying. And this tells us which nuclei will decay in which ways. Because wherever a nuclei, uh, an isotope is, or a nuclei, on this graph, it's got to move closer to the stability curve. So remember, alpha is going to be in this direction. So that's what alpha is going to look like. Well, because of the shape of the curve, things both above and below the curve could move in that direction and still would get closer to the curve. So nuclei both above and below the curve could decay by alpha. On the, plus, on the flip side, beta minus, we already know, is moving in this direction. So this is our beta, I'm just going to get another pen. This is our beta minus. Moves like that towards the curve. Well, only things above the curve could decay through beta minus because you're moving down to the right, so you'd have to be up and to the left before you started to make that more stable. 
On the flip side, we know that beta plus is this way, so only things underneath the curve could decay by a beta plus. So, if you know where the stability curve is, you can put an x where your isotope is. So if it was here, for example, you could say an isotope there, well, it's trying to get to the curve. Beta minus will get us closer to this. Alpha will get it closer, so they're both fine, but it isn't going to do beta plus, because that's going to take it further away from this stability curve. That's all for today.